On his first trip to the region since taking office, President Biden has the eyes of the world on him. After signing a security pact with Israel today to deny nuclear weapons to Iran, Biden will hold talks with Palestinian officials next, and then he'll meet with Saudi leadership where he's expected to discuss oil. And we're joined by Professor Emeritus at George Washington University, Dr. Hussein Askari. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, in the mid 80s, you actually helped develop the first energy models and plans for Saudi Arabia. Now, times have changed, but do you think President Biden will convince Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to boost oil production during their meeting? This is uh, a really is a political dis decision for Saudi Arabia, much more than an economic decision. I think Saudi Arabia will do something, obviously, Biden would not have come to the if he felt he was going to be rebuffed. Uh, you know, there have been preparations that have been done and nice words will be said and I'm sure they will boost it just a little bit. And the reason why he can't do much more than that, it takes time for him to increase oil production. Probably my best guess is Saudi Arabia can increase its oil output between about a million to a million and a half barrels a day within about three to six months, so it's not immediate. But why he has to worry is that Saudi Arabia also has an agreement within OPEC. It has an agreement with Russia, and the Russians will not forgive him if he does what America exactly asks him to do. So he'll, he'll do some dancing here, some dancing there, and they will say, yes, oil production will be increased, but it will not be as much as everybody wants. So you don't believe that Saudi really has the means to increase production significantly? And, and what about the UAE? I mean, there's a lot of speculation that the UAE doesn't either. Uh, the UAE has, my guess is, between 400,000 to 500,000 barrels a day. And uh, they are always much more of a tiger, as I think one American uh, like Spartacus. They, they fight. But they have to be very, very careful in the region where they live. They're now relying very much on Israel in their agreements with Israel and, of course, ultimately also with U.S. backing. But they have to be careful. Uh, the, one, the other country you have not asked that could increase output, of course, is Iran. And Iran, it would take a little bit more time, but Iran could add probably about a million to a million and a half barrels a day again within six months. But the, that's a complicated political issue too. It is complicated and an another subject altogether which warrants a completely separate interview. But let's go back to Saudi. I mean, if Saudi does commit to uh, or hint at boosting production, what impact do you think that that would, would have on energy prices? Well, I think uh, if I may just back up a little bit, even if Saudi Arabia says, yes, we will increase oil output within six months by a million and a half pounds a day, which is the maximum, which I don't think they'll do. But if they did say that, it would take time for that oil to be shipped. It would take time for that oil to be refined. And in the US, as an example, uh, oil refineries are right now operating at, a, at their maximum capacity. Uh, you know, they're very close to 94, 95% in most regions. And that's about all that they can do. So having an effect at the pump, it, I don't think you're going to see much of an effect. Now, I think where I would agree with you, what you're hinting at, is that the reason if they say they're going to do that, the sentiment will change. I think that uh, even Russia will then have to discount its oil even more than it is doing today. And if Russia does that, I think other entities will start buying Russian oil beside China and India and a few others. So it's not going to, I think, happen immediately. But of course, if Saudi Arabia is forthcoming and is willing to do something, the sentiment in the market will change without a doubt. But I, again, I think Saudi Arabia will be very careful what it does also. As you said, refining is at maximum capacity. So how long would it take for a drop in the oil price to really trickle down, reduce inflation as the cost of shipping and transport and everything inevitably drops as a, as a consequence? Well, I think that is a, that's a much more medium to long-term issue because I think, you know, as you have hinted, 
the oil has got to be shipped. Uh, there is a shortage even of tankers. And so if the tankers bring that oil, it goes through refinery and we have a bottleneck there. And at the same time, then that to trickle into inflation reduction, overall inflation will also take time. Let me just add something. When all the modeling that we did for Saudi Arabia it was a massive project, by the way, in the 1980s to do all the energy planning for Saudi Arabia. The thing that you discover is what drives oil prices dramatically is the rate of growth, economic growth, which affects demand. Of course, output is the other side of it, but the rate of growth is a, is a very, very important factor in how oil prices uh, move. Now, I do think inflation anyway will go down. But I don't know if it'd be so much because Saudi Arabia is going to produce more oil. I think it'd be much more because there's going to be a slowdown in the US economy. Every indication is there that there'll be a slowdown. And with that slowdown, demand for oil will go down. And of course, then you're going to see a drop in oil prices at the pump. And as you said, generally inflation will decline. But I think we always focus that Saudi Arabia has got this magic wand that it can do anything it wants to oil prices. I don't think that that really is the case. Okay, Professor Emeritus at George Washington University, Dr. Hussein Askari, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.